Welcome to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm the nasally Sean Noble. Oh, and I'm the gravelly <laughs> Chris Clements. <laughs> today we're we, uh, why are we we're, having we're, a good time We're just a, a, quite a pair today. We're a mess. But we will be salvaged because we've got a great guest today. We have Kelly Cooper, who is a congressional candidate for Congress going against uh, Greg Stanton. Yes. Uh, in where probably, is Greg Stanton? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, on where, his boat. That's a great question. Is he He's on like his Waldo. boat? Where's Waldo? <laughs> I haven't seen him. Have you seen him? No. I, I haven't seen, seen him. comments on Well, you know, lately. he he probably doesn't want to leave his where he lives, which is not in his he new lives district. In North Central, doesn't he? Yeah, he doesn't yeah, live in the district. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Kelly Cooper, tell us a little bit about yourself and why in the world were you crazy enough to want to run for Congress? Uh, I think it's less about wanting and more about feeling obligated or needed to run. It's like a calling. Uh, the background for me is uh, I grew up to a single mom, moved around a lot as a kid. Uh, probably not dissimilar from a lot of people you've met. Uh, when I graduated high school from uh, the north suburbs of Chicago, I joined the Marine Corps. Served uh, mid-90s, non-combat, but all over the world. So I've been all of South and Central America, Cuba, South Korea, Okinawa. Uh, when I... Uh, Honorably uh, left the Marine Corps in 97. I went back into the hospitality industry and sweat equity my way into my first bit of restaurant ownership out in Arizona. Today I own three restaurants, uh, two of them in the district that I'm running for, and I employ over 100 families. I've been married nine years and I have two kids, uh, second and third grade, at a Great Hearts Charter School here in Arizona, one of the best schools there are around. And Really, I'm running because I think the American dream is, is uh, under threat, and uh, I've had the calling to do my part to try to protect it. Well, God bless you for that. Yeah. Because uh, as Chris and I, who have known a lot of congressional candidates and congressmen and worked for them, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a brutal existence. It, it is. I mean, I, I hope you know what you signed yourself up for. <laughs> I mean, you're, well, you're, you're uh, joining us from Washington, D.C., so I, so obviously you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Um, it says here in your in your bio, one thing, is that you start off as a bartender, as somebody who used yeah. to sell a lot of so beer to bartenders. Be it, it might be a little bit off. I started as a dishwasher in, uh, in my first restaurant when I was old enough to work. Uh, but when I got out of the Marine Corps, I went back into the hospitality industry, and I Flipped bottles for TGI Fridays and did all the flare competitions and all that stuff. It was a good time. Oh. Well, I did noticed you, he's did got you have two, to wear a lot of flare. You, 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 you can tell he won the flare competition. <laughs> he's he got the two different tags on right now. Look at that. If you're not watching the video, you should right. watch it. Uh, a handsome fellow. So the Stanton district, this district yeah. uh, has, has gotten a little bit more Republican. It was drawn uh, to include more of you know, includes East Mesa now. My my mom is actually yeah, in, yeah. in your district. She so the original in... district was about Democrat plus 15 or 20. And after the redistricting, it's, and you alluded to it earlier when you said that he doesn't live in the district. He does not. Um, it has gone from that D plus 15 to 20 to an even registration. Um, most of the polls out right now have it as a toss-up. Uh, but... The uh, Republican registration is 32%. Democrat registration is 32%. And independent registration is 34%. Wow. It was a pretty exciting time because we have the opportunity to bring in uh, quality, effective uh, representation versus the rubber stamp we've had for the last four years. Well, I think rubber stamp is a really good way to put it. He has literally <laughs> been, he basically handed, Greg Stanton when handed he Pelosi up. his voting card and said, whatever you want, ma'am. When he shows up. Well, that's he why I said when he yeah. just he just hands it over to her. Yeah. And so if he's not going to be there, he'll give props. Even, yeah. even even when he's voting from a yacht in Utah, he's voting with his <laughs> yeah, Absolutely, absolutely. For those listeners who didn't know that, he literally voted from his yacht. Yeah, in Utah on, while the boat was going. I mean, it, I mean, he's in this hearing voting. in the middle of COVID while we were all locked in our houses. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, COVID. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it it just shows how you know. Black and out of touch he is, not only from his old district, but now the this district that's, I wouldn't say it's been handed to him, but he's decided to run in, even though he has no ties to the district, he has absolutely no history in the district. He's the former mayor of Phoenix, which I, I would I would bet doesn't really go over very well in that district. 
Yeah, I mean, it does not actually. These suburbs don't like to be identified with big city liberal policies. So his moniker is his nickname now is big city liberal mayor uh, because you're right. Mesa, the part that we had it, Awatuki literally calls themselves Awatuki to be not identified as Phoenix, right? Uh, even though they're part of Phoenix. Uh, so yeah, we we in this district are part of a, a network of small town communities that aren't interested in the big city liberal policies that Greg Stan represents. And and those big liberal, you know, city policies is high crime, mm-hmm. you, know, a be, you know, benevolence to the teachers unions. You can uh-huh. just go down the list. What are some of the issues that you're seeing out there in your district that are so important that you know, uh-huh. you're running to uh, make sure uh, get solved? Yeah, well, so I, I hate to make it a bit downer, but uh, it's inflation. I mean, it's the number one issue facing probably almost every district in the country. Uh, in Phoenix specifically, uh, 13% is the highest in the nation. Right. But I'd like to break that down just a bit further and give you what that actually represents. It's a month and a half of salary. Wow. So almost no matter what you make, you are now losing a month and a half of your income for inflation. And that's crushing. Uh, I, I talked to a woman last night at one of my meetings that's just about that age for retiring and she's lost so much money in her 401k her proposed social security isn't going to be able to keep up with her bills and so now she has to contemplate whether she can even retire at all she she said to me i'm really lucky because i like my job but i may not be able to retire ever and that's the effect of bad policy that's the effect of rubber stamp representation yeah well, well said. Number two uh, is the border uh, and uh, rising crime, fentanyl, uh, the humanitarian crisis, the trafficking, all of the effects that are happening at the border. And depending on where in the district you are, uh, they could be 1A and 1B. I have a really good friend whose brother earlier this year uh, died from a fentanyl poisoning. Uh, and two weeks ago, we had 35 pounds busted in the district. Small town, 35 pounds of fentanyl. Uh, pulled off the streets. Wow. And some people argue, well, that means the system's working. They're catching. Nah, uh, no. Uh, there, there, is, there is no environment where catching 35 pounds represents the entire load of fentanyl that's been trafficked across the border in, in different areas. Uh, it's naive to think that's the case. Fentanyl is a, the number one killer of 18 to 45-year-old people. And it's probably the most terrifying thing for parents today. Uh, the story for me is Halloween. We're going to go trick or treating. And then when we're done, I'm going to throw away all the candy and replace it with new candy that I bought from the store for fear of running into fentanyl for my kids. And, and I'm sure every parent out there can identify with that. Yeah, no question. I mean, it is, it is an epidemic that is just getting worse for sure. And you're right. The fact that they, they, Bust thirty five pounds, you know, here in the in the Phoenix area, means that the system isn't working. Yeah, because it should have never right. gotten here. No, there's plenty I mean, of more uh, that is not being found. And now with the the, the I mean, you you've mentioned it in a roundabout way, the rainbow fentanyl, which looks like candy, mm-hmm. which yep, which is yep. In, incredibly frightening. I, I we had some friends send us some some videos from Tucson um, a couple of days ago, just that the the that. The Tucson hospitals are being inundated with kids who are who are overdosing on fentanyl right now. Well, and uh, into the story I heard, I can't remember which university it was, but uh, some university kids, football players, were out partying, thought they were doing cocaine or blow or whatever, and it turns out it was laced with fentanyl. Well, one kid's overdosing, the other kid tries to give him mouth to mouth resuscitation, and that kid ends up overdosing at the same time just by trying to save the first kid. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's pretty potent, and there's a new one that's 10 times worse coming up. That's great. Yeah, and it's a reflection of exactly what you say of the failed you know, Biden border policies that we're, we're, we're experiencing, the flood of whatever the estimate is. I've heard 2 million, I've heard 3 million, I've heard 5 million people flooding yeah. through the, our, our porous border, which, which includes you know, vast amounts of criminal, vast amounts of drugs that are being trafficked by the cartels. Yeah, and nothing's well, and, being and done. Then, then you have people being trafficked. Uh, I've been down to the border, so um, I'm sure every gap has something like this. But 
you know, in the human sector, they have the rape tree. You can imagine what that means. It's been torn down now. Uh, but what kind of administration continues to allow these kind of things to happen? The people that are coming are being taken advantage of. It's creating humanitarian crisis, and it's masking all kinds of dangerous elements coming across our border, including terrorists, at a rate of five times what had been caught or seen in the last, what, five years? Right. Uh, we, we may pay a price for this that isn't being foreseen. And again, the administration, and by default, because he votes for everything they want, uh, Greg Stanton stands by and lets it happen. Uh, uh, we need better representation, and that's that's what I plan to bring as a Marine Corps veteran and small business owner. Well, yeah, what is the Greg Stanton border plan? Does anybody know what it is? Border plan? <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's whatever Nancy's Pelosi says. Exactly. 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 I mean, literally, just whatever. He he is a foot soldier in Nancy Pelosi's liberal agenda. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's a good way to put it. Um, <clears throat> Kelly, what? Uh, so you've got the district. It's now District Four. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's Tempe, it's Chandler, it's Ahwatukee, it's Mesa. Um, Correct. What, what would be the, you know, obviously the, 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 a bunch of the voters in this district have never been represented by Stanton, uh, the majority right. probably. Um, what, are you, what are you hearing from them, if anything, about him? That's a great question. Most of the people that I know that have had interactions with him uh, have a very poor view. Uh, they, I'll give you a story. I had someone come to me. Uh, this happened last year, the beginning of last year. Uh, so as a military veteran, uh, passed away. And uh, in this district, so it was Congressional District 9 at the time, uh, but a representative of the family reached out to three people. They reached out to... Uh, Kristen Sinema, uh, Mark Kelly, and Greg Stanton as the representatives. And what they wanted uh, was simple military honors with, with the burial. Mm. And what happened, They I believe they reached out somewhere in the neighborhood of, of two months in advance. And within a week, uh, Kristen Sinema's team had gotten back to them. Two weeks before the funeral, Mark Kelly's team had gotten back to them. And I think it was two weeks after the funeral was when Greg Stanton's team finally got back to them. Unbelievable. Now, as a congressional representative, the majority of your job is to handle and fix the issues for the people that are in your district and then go represent their best interests as yes. legislation is presented on the floor of the House. And to me, this story uh, tells the tale. Uh, but, you know, you have Apple pieces coming out of me that, uh, seem to try to present myself as though I'm not military and that I hate military. And I get calls now. I, get, I literally get calls now uh, every day, three or four times a day, of people that are pissed off uh, because I'm, the, I'm the, the founder and chairman of the Maricopa County Republican Veterans Club. I helped uh, with the relaunch of the Chandler Veterans Coalition. I throw the Marine Corps birthday at my bar every single year. And I'm endorsed by three major police unions in the state and have done multiple pieces of charity work for fallen officers and just for the for the police associations to help them raise money. Uh, but this guy's got commercials out there trying to pretend as though I'm not involved in the community and that I hate police and law enforcement. And the people in the district know better. And it's backfiring on a pretty regular basis. Well, that's good to hear, because I, I, it is it is interesting. That see, it seems to me the Democrats, the, the playbook this year is to accuse your opponent of the very thing that you're the most vulnerable Oh, about. they've been doing that now for quite some time. You can, it's almost yeah. become a joke, where, where the Democrats mm -hmm. will accuse the, 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 our side, the conservative side, Republican side, whatever you want to call it, of doing exactly what they're doing. Yeah, defund the police yeah. and, you know, yeah. turn their back on well, veterans. Well, it's the Republicans who want to defund the police. Well, no, not exactly. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> so but, uh, the, on the only thing that I've heard them try to put out as an opposition piece for me is uh, one time uh, I described the hiring of and training of 87,000 IRS agents as 
uh, weapons handling police force as a Gestapo, uh, because I think we have an oversaturation of federal level policing in this country. And so because of that, I don't like law enforcement. Oh uh, I believe that law enforcement should be handled on the local level. There is a place for the FBI and some other federal level, but your IRS agents, there's really not an excuse for them not to be able to reach out to local law enforcement when they have the need to arrest somebody and get the assistance of local law enforcement versus hiring and training to use lethal force 87,000 new ones. Yeah. Uh, it seems seems like a little bit of an overreach. It's, it's a huge that, overreach. That might be that might be sarcastic a little bit. Uh, that's that's <laughs> actually one of the best things on the on the agenda for if the Republicans take the Congress is basically defunding the IRS to the tune of those there's 87, a, there's, a lot of there's a lot of budgetary moves we can make to undo some of this mess. Um, I mean, there's no doubt about it really, that the IRS needs uh, you know, support personnel, because if you call the IRS right now sure. for an issue, you can't get anybody. Right. You can't get any online help. You can't get any help with anything. So that right. that that part of the plan I looked at, and I was like, OK, well, if that can get fixed, that, that'd that be sense. great. But the fact that they're going to go out in force and and uh, well, the enforcement... audit anybody who has a little mistake on their, their tax returns to try to bring in one trillion dollars is the last yeah. estimate well and let's 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 talk through how absurd the number of eighty seven thousand for the irs is oh, yeah the entirety of the state department is seventy seven thousand there are nineteen thousand five hundred border patrol agents and we have eighty seven thousand irs agents i mean since when should we have four times more irs agents than we do border patrol and we have 2.5 million people a year coming across the border absolutely i mean it, it that that's got to be a whole huge vulnerability for Greg Stanton and his, his Democrat pals. Yeah. So uh, if, if we're able to get our message out, we win the election uh, hands down. It really is a message election. And the people in this district recognize that it really is inflation and security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I listen, I would say that, uh, it, it goes just a step further because a lot of the money, the $7 trillion in the last two years has been put, out, put up for spending, but about a third of that has been spent. What happens when the other two-thirds of that money is flushed into the economy? That is a Where does inflation stop? Question. And uh, the Fed raising rates doesn't solve this problem. This, this is a problem of a lack of understanding of how economies work the administration and all the people that vote in lockstep with them are completely out of touch with the impacts of their decisions on the people they mean to represent. That is a great point that, because the, I mean, you look back at other inflationary times, early eighties when Reagan was president, inflation was up, mm -hmm. but what he wasn't doing, he wasn't spending, he was no. cutting spending right. and he was, re you know, reducing regulations yes. to allow the business community to try to and cutting taxes. Yeah. And, and he was, he was working on the supply side of the and issue. And it worked. And and now it's just the opposite. It's going to be, it's getting worse. It's going to be terrible for a while. Yeah. I mean, I don't think people understand that and, this is not going to go away like in a couple of months. And that's what's it's great not, about. It's not transitory. Right. Say that. No, <laughs> not at all. And that's what's great about your perspective, I think, because you, you come at it as a restaurant owner and, mm -hmm. and your customers are some and your workers are some of the most vulnerable folks being affected by this. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I remember the story that I told you earlier about the living nearing retirement age. And I'm not saying that restaurant workers, but imagine folks in the economy at the lower end of the economic scale. How are they dealing with this? Because their their wages aren't rising at the same rates that, that uh, costs are. I mean, they're losing seven thousand dollars a year uh, in in Arizona and across the country. And you see gas prices. I just got a text this morning. Monday gas prices were four eleven. Today they're four ninety nine. Yeah, well, they're I just going saw them over five bucks in a couple of places around town. Pretty, yeah, yeah you, pretty that, dramatic. You go buy the fancy gas. At the no, no, store. I don't. No, I don't. I I shop for gas around here. I don't have to. That's <laughs> why I have a Tesla. Oh, well, I'm a I'm the only right winger you know that drives a Tesla. <laughs> exactly. Right? I have a big truck. <laughs> I have a big truck like all his constituents out there in Mason. Well, Chandler. I'm going to get a big truck as soon as they build the cyber truck. I mean, I'm on the well, list. But unfortunately, it won't go 100 miles without needing well, to be charged. Not. It probably takes 45 not. minutes. But it'll be faster than your truck. You, you find that? 
<laughs> it won't go very far. I, I think by the time they come out with the electric vehicles that are big trucks like that, uh, we'll we'll be over on hydrogen engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've maybe. heard that from the uh, from the dealers I've been talking to. They they believe that the future really is not so much electric; it's hydrogen. Yep, our infrastructure isn't built to handle the electric vehicles. It's not built to handle the green energy. Policy. Well, certainly, it's not in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 California is a great example. <laughs> I talked to somebody over there that, that their belief in their their common phraseology in California is so goes California, so goes the country, and I think that should be uh, like uh, a children's uh, scary tale. Yeah, like, so goes California, so goes the country. Let's take a look. Let's see where we're at in California. Is that really where we want our country to go? We really don't. We really, really well, don't. Gr- yeah, they 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 oh, keep yeah. seeming to double down on on really bad and failed policies, whether it be well, crime and, or energy or anything the, else. The great thing is this will be fun to watch because Gavin Newsom is running for president. Yes. I mean, he obviously he won't run against Biden, but he's getting himself poised of when Biden announces he's not, which I think he will. He'll run or right. he'll run in 2028. But I mean, you want to talk about somebody that's going to be easy for us to just. Joe Biden is not running for president. No, I don't think so. There's no way. <laughs> Nope. They may not make it to the end of this term. Yeah. That's I mean, true. Right. Based on what we've seen the last couple of days. No, I completely agree with you, well, Kelly. And I, think it's, I think it's getting that's, worse that's and worse with, and worse. That's said with a measure of sympathy and compassion for the position that he is in, not as a means of poking at him. Yeah. But and, becoming more and more obvious and dangerous, frankly. Yeah, it is. Oh, I, I totally mean, agree I, with you. You know, and we've talked about this before. My my father has Alzheimer's. He's a constituent of yours. Uh or will be, Kelly. Uh, I love it. And uh, but you know, watching his decline has been terrible, and it's yeah. just not fair to the president to have been put in this position because the decline is it, it's it's going to damage his legacy, uh, and it's going to damage his family. I just think it's it's been a terrible thing for him. Well, it's right for the country. It's been even worse wife- for the country. It's it's embarrassing. My, both of my wife's grandparents went through this, and, and my grandfather on, on my mother's side went through the same thing. And it's it's tragic. It's crushing on the families that have to go through it. Uh, and and for those that have gone through it, you see the signs. It's, it, it, it's not hard to see them. No. They're, they're pretty blatant. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you're in the home stretch now. You know, we've got yeah. early val- voting starts in what a just under two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah, yeah, two weeks. And and so I'm sure you've done some big boy polling that's been talked about here. Mm-hmm. You know, what's what what is what are some of the things you're seeing that, that are gonna help you close close the deal in the next several weeks? Uh, that's the issues that we're already talking about. I mean it's it is it's uh, inflation, it's uh, border security or security in general, uh, it's uh, rising crime, it's water. Uh, water is a big issue for the district, uh, and educational freedom. And these are all the things that the constituents are talking about. Uh, and my opponent is trying to change the narrative to things that are important for some, uh, but not the number one, two, three issues for most people in this district. And frankly, I would argue that he doesn't have the foundation to speak really intelligently about uh, economic matters, business matters, or military matters. And so when people that know me well uh, see some of the Apple commercials that have been put out, it makes them mad uh, and it activates more and more grassroots um, supporters, which is great for me. Uh, and I would, I would say we've talked about a lot of down in this interview, uh, but the, the great part is that we have a really, really bright future after we get through this mess. And with the right elected officials, we can mitigate some of of the future pain that is going to be there. Uh, we won't be able to get rid of it all, but we can uh, take a fair amount of it away and and start down the right path to the bright future I know that we can have. So it's pretty exciting, frankly. Awesome. Well, we uh, we look forward to watching how this plays out. We're, uh, we're rooting for you. Yeah. Um, I appreciate congr- that. Congratulations it's on a, a hard thought primary. And uh, it was. Some great candidates in that primary. We all worked really, really hard. Uh, and I think that any one of the candidates that came out might have been a great choice. Uh, I might be biased towards me, 
Um, well, I, I would hope so. Some great work in Congress. Good. Well, where can people find you? Where, on, yeah. how do they, how do they show support? Yeah, that's great. Uh, so I'm all over social media, uh, but the easiest way to get there is uh, kellycooperarizona.com. You'll find links to everything. Uh, you guys and everyone listening can go there and find the contribution link. And I, I say that specifically because I often hear it called a donation. This isn't a donation to a lost cause. This is a contribution to a movement. And it matters. Uh, so, you know, five dollars to uh, as much as you can afford. I think the maximum per cycle is fifty eight hundred. Uh, but you know, every dollar matters. Every dollar counts. Uh, right next to that is a button for volunteering. Uh, putting out yard signs to help get the message out, posting meet and greets. I try to do two or three a day around the district. Um, helping uh, do thank you letters or peer-to-peer uh, -peer texting or um, phone banking. There are tons and tons and tons of ways that you can get involved to help your candidates. And for those of you in my district or even outside of my district, I've just outlined the things that you can do to help uh, flip this seat in this specific district, which is going to kellycooperarizona.com uh, and finding the method that most suits you, whether it's contributing money or contributing time. They are all helpful to all of our candidates. And I uh, am most gracious for any support people are willing to offer. Awesome. That's great. Well, thank you for taking the time. We know it's yeah. uh, it's a crunch time for you and in, in campaigning and raising money and all those things. So. Good yeah. luck to you. And, uh, it enjoy. is. It's an exciting we'll time. I, I want to thank you guys for spending the time with me. Time is a valuable resource, so I really appreciate you spending it on me. Uh, and, you know, go have a blessed day. Uh, Semper Fi. Great. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. God bless. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thanks for listening. See you.